I can't believe we haven't done this um, film before. Paranormal Activity, the original. (laughs) I must admit, I did not want to watch this movie for a long time. And I put it off Mm. for a long time. Simply because I only started my horror journey about just before COVID. Or the the Halloween before COVID had begun. And I remember when this movie came out and how everyone was talking about how it's the most scariest thing ever. So I just subconsciously always dodged it and avoided it it because yeah it just seemed like it would be too scary for me and i and yeah and and every time so we took it in turns each week to suggest the movie and every mm-hmm. time i would always hope that celia doesn't say paranormal activity <laughs> so you didn't have to watch it <laughs> no and the weird thing is i'm the one who bloody suggested yeah, it <laughs> i was gonna say you suggested this this is all i don't know you. why i did it i don't know it was I've just the, so it was bad the, at suggesting the, things for the moment so i'm glad you said it <laughs> it was the, it was like the thumbnail now that came up first on Amazon Prime. Yeah. And I don't know why I said it, but yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. okay, I want you to go first on this one because, yeah, I have some stuff to say. So what did you think of Paranormal Activity? Now that you've kind of built it up in your head, is like really, really scary. Um, have you have you seen this before? I have, uh, but I always get them mixed up because they kind of follow the same pattern uh, that all the oh, films, all the them, right? Yeah, I think I've seen three. I don't know if there's more than that or if I'm just mixing all of them together. So I was, I was. It took me a while to remember which one I was watching, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. And I think I've seen clips of the final scene, or like over Instagram, every now and then. So I was fairly yeah. familiar with the storyline. Okay, yeah. So I went into this not having the slightest idea of what was going to happen. I mean, I vaguely knew that it's like a found footage type thing or like they yeah. use like video cameras to film it. So like like Blair Witch or Cloverfield or mm-hmm. something similar to that. Um, it's, it's a bit of an odd one, really, because it's such a... Considering the reputation of the film, it's a very small scale project. Like, yeah. I think there's only like three actors in it or four actors. Like, there's very yeah, few. I think there's four, but you know, basically two of them only have a few lines. Yeah, yeah, and um, and it's just, and we just seem to sh- kind of flick back and forward between the same camera angle in a bedroom and then the rest of the house. And I don't know, like I just found with the movie there was a lot of nothing. There was a lot mm-hmm. of not much going on. But and but this is where it was a bit deceptive because it's just in those moments when nothing's going on is where I was on the edge of my seat a little bit. Yeah, because your brain's but, making up all the things that oh, could happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that that space in between the nothingness where the where the where the terror is for me mm. and um and yeah it's just it's just yeah, it was just the tension it was just the waiting i mean yeah there were no real big scares in the movie like you didn't see a monster or you didn't see a killer or mm. or something it was just everything was suggestion and and it kind of worked on me a little bit like i had mm. to I, I i admit I, I watched this movie in the in the daytime and to prepare yourself yeah for yeah because yeah, yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah what what did you what did you think? Well, um, I well, the first time I watched it, I had exactly the same feeling as you. Like I was scared the whole way through with the thought of what could happen. But I would say this is definitely a film to only watch one time because yes. it doesn't yeah. do anything. And when no. you already know that, it's a really boring film. Like oh, really? there's <laughs> not boring, but like it's not scary because not yeah. your imagination makes up far scarier than what's it actually. It fills in the blanks. Yeah. It fills in the blanks and you're doing yeah. a lot of the work. And sometimes yeah. Yeah. that works. And sometimes I, I like that in a film where they don't just show you everything, you know, make us feel things. But I feel like this film takes it too far and mm. doesn't do any of the work. Like we yeah, do all yeah. the work to scare ourselves yeah, and yeah. it doesn't necessarily do a lot of it. And yeah, I just I feel, feel, I felt a little bit cheated out of the film, I have to admit. Like I remembered it being really scary. And then I got to 10 minutes before the end and I had to check how long was left because I was like, I, I still haven't been scared. I've been kind of on edge, right? but in my own brain of, oh, imagine if this yeah. happened and imagine if that happened. Like knowing quite well that it doesn't happen and it just, yeah, it makes it not a great film to rewatch. And it's kind of disappointing because it has such a big cult following or at least a, it has its place in horror history. And yeah. 
it just, for me, it just doesn't feel like it lives up to that. And I've yeah. got loads of reasons why. But I do appreciate, you know, they had a, they spent $15,000 on this film. You know, really, really small budget. Peanuts, really, yeah. Literally, yeah, nothing. They could spend that on makeup in other films. Yeah. Um, you know, they... I didn't realise this, but they didn't have a script uh, for the actors. They just had kind of general cues. So I appreciate that. And I appreciate the fact that it was very small scale. It was filmed in the director's house. It was very, you know, that's cool. But also I feel like you have to kind of the way Blair Witch Project lives up to that by being absolutely terrifying from my recollection. Um, If you're going to do something gimmicky almost like found footage, you have to do it really well. And I just don't think that this was it for me. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a movie, there's a movie I watched uh, a little while ago. I think it's a Taiwanese movie. Let me just find it. Sorry. I'll I'll edit this bit out, but uh, yeah. So I watched this movie called Incantation a while ago. Mm. And this was during that period where we hadn't recorded for for a couple of weeks or something and that is a found footage movie and but the thing with that movie is you get those long pauses or those long moments of tension but there's at the end of each one of them there's a some kind of reveal or some kind of scare or you know some kind of you can see something yeah and um whereas with this movie that you get all the build-up and all the tension but you don't get the climax or the crescendo of each moment it's just Mm. the build-up 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 and then suddenly maybe the door might open a little bit or you know again tension 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 something on the table just kind of moves a tiny bit to the left or whatever it's, it's whereas with other movies that are similar you get some kind of reveal like whether it's a ghost or a beast or mm. i don't know someone gets something thrown at them or you know there's normally something yeah whereas this didn't have any of that but because this whereas i think because this was the first time i was watching it i kept anticipating something would happen yeah, there'd course. be some big payoff at the end but I can totally see where you're coming from, where you've seen this before and you've realized because of it, it doesn't have any of those payoffs. Mm. Like there's very little replay value. And I can appreciate, you know, subtle horror in in, yeah. in ways, but yeah, it just doesn't feel like it it does anything. You don't leave it going, oh, that scene was really cool and the way they did that on such a small budget was incredible. You know, it's just yeah, um yeah. okay, they did what you think they would do with such a small budget. Um, You know, and the other thing that really annoyed me, I feel like this is going to be quite negative for me, but um, I feel like they repeated a lot of the scary things as well. So there was a lot of walking. There was, you know, a lot of, well, twice at least, Katie stands by the bed and just looks at Mika. You know, they don't even do different things every time to try and scare you. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. repeat quite a lot. Um, so that was another thing. I was like, okay, come on, <laughs> you can you can think of slightly cooler things. Like even if the noises were slightly different, or you know that whisper that he hears in a different language, like that just never happens again. But mm. what if it had escalated and actually he could decipher some of the words and they were calling out to her, and these kind of things and. You know, I feel like the storyline itself didn't really go anywhere. You know, they find a photo of her in the attic. Yeah. And then that kind of doesn't, nothing really happens after that. They don't find more photos everywhere or they don't see burning things anymore. You know, it's... It just feels like each thing was done and then didn't really do anything to the story. Yeah, that um, what you'd mentioned about the there being no script and they were just kind of working off of guidelines. They, I think the bit where it was most obvious is, you know, when they were talking about uh, in, in the past, this whole haunting or whatever had happened to an, another girl. Yeah. And they were talking about, I think in the 60s or whenever it was like. Yeah, the I, yeah the exorcism. Yeah, yeah that, yeah. that whole bit just felt so like they were winging it a little little bit mm. and and that's probably where it was the most obvious whereas I think I think a lot of movies can work on improvisation and whatnot but then yeah a the performers need to be very skilled in improvisation yeah and some moments would need a bit more structure and a bit more guidance like there's a bit of a balancing act there I think I completely agree and it was so I didn't know that it was improvised before I watched this and one of the things I wrote down a few times was I really don't like the acting from Katie I don't there was something about it that just did not feel real it sounded like somebody auditioning for something you know I, I 
I, don't I, know if hear, you could... I hear exactly what you're saying, but I had the other way around. Okay. I had it the other way around where I felt like Mika wasn't giving her enough to bounce off of. That is true. And, and the maybe camera it's... was all the camera was on her 90% of the time. Yeah. So she was probably, she was just she was just staring into thin air like she didn't mm-hmm. have enough to bounce off of. That's that's what that's what I that's felt. That's what you mean. Yeah. And though. and that would help if they had more direction, maybe from or maybe like a loose script rather than just cues. Uh, but yeah. it was, yeah, her acting style, maybe it just comes from the fact that she is trying to be so realistic that it almost goes too far and becomes a little bit over the top or satirical version yeah, of, yeah. you know. Yeah, no, I hear what you're so, saying. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I don't know. I didn't. Yeah, I think the I think the guy didn't give her enough personally. But yeah, it is what it is. I and actually, you do make a good point because I thought his acting was fine, but I think it's probably because he didn't really do much, so he didn't have <laughs> no. a chance to not be good. <laughs> no, no, um, no. Do you think she looked like young Kate Middleton? Because I is did. That what they were going for? No, I don't think so. But I th- she looked just like Kate Middleton. Uh, I, I think I need to look at her again yeah they're side yeah. by side but why, that, why that do you say that i don't know she just really reminded me of her i don't, I don't know what okay. it was but yeah i i mean the other thing that i don't know what you thought about it was how were they able to sleep in that house so calmly every night <laughs> after all the stuff that happened yes yeah it was a bit kind of like okay guys you got your evidence now get the hell out of there and run yeah or, or even um when you're sleeping, close your door. Because yeah. every time the camera was pointed at their bed, their door was open all the time. And I think that was more for the audience to be scared, mm. maybe. But I think yeah, something in for something that's meant to be so realistic or shot so realistically, a lot of the internal logic didn't really hold up. Like they didn't really do what people would have done in real life. And yeah. And I think I think that's yeah, the problem with trying to be so realistic is that in a lot of these films that we watch, you know, they do stay in the house, but it's okay because we know it's a film and yeah. that's you know, they're obviously trying to move the narrative along. But when you try and be so realistic, everything that you do that isn't what a normal person would do just pulls you out of that story. Yeah, like not leaving or, like you say, shutting the door and also filming everything as well. You know, that in itself is not something that people would do if it gets to the point where they're arguing all the time. They're saying, you know, this is happening because of the camera and stuff like that. You would stop filming for at least a bit, but they don't really stop. And I suppose, no. you know, me his character is you know he's obviously loves film and loves filming things and wants to get to the bottom of this but there just feels like it brings you out of the fact that this is real like even if they changed the story so that they couldn't leave for some reason like they go to the hotel for a few days and then they get back and everything's way worse they're like right it clearly doesn't want us to leave we have to stay here and figure it out kind of thing it would just yeah make the story more believable yeah because like in other horror movies like um I forget the name of it, but the ones with Patrick Wilson. I think it's the Sinister movies or Insidious, where they move house, that and they sell house and move somewhere yeah. else. But yet the the ghosts or whatever still follow them. Mm. And they didn't even attempt that in here. They didn't even call the police, or they didn't. Yeah, like even when she had the big uh, bite mark on her, like call mm. an ambulance, call someone. Like yeah, they just seemed so. It just seemed so. They, they as a couple, they just seemed so disconnected from each other. And I don't know if that was intentional but then part of me thinks no i don't think the movie was really that smart where it was intentional i think it might have just been an accident Mm. because i I don't know about you but i just found the whole film the 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 element i found more interesting and i think it was just an accident and i'm probably reading too much into it is i just felt like the story was more of a break a breakdown of a relationship rather than than a a ghost story where it's like it didn't seem like so so mika kept walking around with this camera you know, he was pretty invasive at points where w- with what he was recording, like he was recording Katie when she was just really terrified or really sad. And he just, it didn't seem to matter how many times he told her to switch or how many times she told yeah. him to switch the camera off. And he kept going against her will. And there were moments where he was tricking her into thinking that the camera was off. Yeah. And it's just, it's just, he just, Mika just seemed to have this, just this disrespect for Katie throughout the movie. And it wasn't like, 
like it was to be honest it wasn't even like a he wasn't evil or anything he was just i mean i've seen m- more extreme examples of disrespect in real life i mean he was mm. but it's just it, it was very kind of like this is my house you know this is yeah. my project this is my whatever you brought this ghost into my house i'm trying to help you i'm trying to help get mm. to the bottom of but then i think it was just when she you know spoilers you know when she kills him at the end or whatever I think she turns out to be the monster or whatever, or that she's mm. possessed or something. Or she's possessed, yeah. Yeah, like it kind of almost felt like she escaped the relationship mm. in a weird yeah. kind of way. And But then again, I'm probably giving the movie more credit than it deserves. Yeah. I think I'm just read. I'm, 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 I'm probably putting a narrative somewhere where there probably wasn't. No, I think yeah. I actually, while you've been speaking, I'm thinking, yeah, you are right. I think the only thing that draws you into this film is the relationship between them. And you do see that breakdown, you know, they're really happy at the beginning. They're talking about their lives together and, you know, marriage. They're they're engaged to be engaged, I think Mika says at one point. Mm. And they're, you know, eating their dinner together. They're having a lovely time. And then you do see that breakdown. I, I really like there's a scene where they're having wine and a curry that Mika made at the beginning and they're really happy. And then, you know, halfway through the film, three quarters of the way through the film, they're they're silently eating out of takeaway boxes, not talking to Uh, each other in the same position as they were then. So you see the kind of difference, the breakdown in their relationship. So I think that, I think you're right. I think it was in there. And uh, that was probably the only thing that made this film feel like it had any substance. I know that's so Mm. harsh, but I think that was the substance of the film. Um, I know that there was. Do you know there was alternative endings to to this? I, I'd, I'd heard, but I've not seen them. Because there was one alternative ending where pretty much the same thing happens, where Katie goes downstairs, Mika goes downstairs, and she kills him. Um, but the difference was instead of like bringing him back upstairs and throwing him on the ground and doing all that stuff, it's just Katie that comes up and she sits on the edge of the bed and just sits there for hours and hours and hours until the police come. And the police come up the stairs and she kind of snaps out of her trance and she starts crying and she says, where's Mika? Like, I'm scared. Where's Mika? And they're telling her to drop the knife and she doesn't drop the knife and they end up shooting her. And I feel like that would have been quite an interesting ending because it shows that their relationship breakdown, you know, it's about their relationship. Where's Mika? What what have I done kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that might have been a little bit cooler that, or have more to the story than the actual ending, which didn't really say anything or have any kind of ending to their story. That's true. Yeah, that yeah, you're right. There's no kind of bookend to it really. It just kind of happens and And then that's it. Yeah. And and I think, you know, her waking up from it and saying where's where's Mika is it it gives it a bit more of a like heart-wrenching oh my god she didn't know what she'd done feeling um but then I suppose the reason they chose the other one was so that Katie's still out there somewhere you know possessed or whatever yeah, yeah but I just yeah. didn't care as much about the scary parts of this film as I did about the relationship so I think that's what I would have preferred to have the other ending yeah yeah there was it, it's a, it's interesting as well like the movie doesn't begin with any opening titles and it doesn't end with any end credits yeah True. Other than um, I think at the beginning it says something like uh, Paramount Pictures wants to thank the family of Katie and yeah. Mika and whatnot, and then at the end it just kind of says, oh, you know, they found Mika's body, but they, you know, mm. nobody knows Katie's whereabouts, and then it just ends, and it's like copyright whatever directed by whatever, and then but there's, I mean, that's it. It's just like one one or two lines of end credits, and I. <sighs> I don't even know if this would have been a good idea or not. I don't know. But they don't really show or reveal how we came. Mm, uh, like in if the police had the picked up the camera or something, but like, what's this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. That would have been, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I yeah, like just, that idea. Like, just something, you know, anything. Like, how do, how do we find this footage? Like, did you notice that, you know, when you talk about the end credits where it says like copyright of Paramount? Yeah. <laughs> underneath that there's like an, a disclaimer saying that nothing in this film is real and don't you know basically don't read into this don't attempt they have to put oh, something it? Obviously. That bit. <laughs> and like it was just it went defeated the whole object of this film being like you know this is so real because it's in black literally black and white at the end being like this is all made up these are it says these are actors playing a role i wonder if like, that was some legal thing they had to it include must have been yeah. but it's just funny that it, it's the only 
if they'd had opening and closing, um, what they're called scenes, yeah, it yeah. probably would have buffered out that if you put it right at the end. Whereas, but because they hadn't done anything, that was the only thing you see at the end. So it kind of worked against them, like a lot of things do in this film, against yeah, the reality yeah. by the clearly legal bit that they had to put at the end, saying it wasn't real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you just reminded me of that movie Creep we watched a while back. Yeah, and this movie Paranormal Activity made me realize, or makes me, yeah, makes me realize how well put together Creep was because that was like a found footage. Yeah, type thing. you're so right. I hadn't thought and, about that. And that was like so much better. Like I don't know, it was just. I completely agree. Now that you said that, it's like Creep had so much happening. It had so much going on, and really, it didn't even have as much. It didn't have any paranormal stuff. It didn't have that many scary things, but the building of the anticipation was so different from this film. I think, you know, that had the luxury of multiple sets and lots of dialogue, whereas this film restricts itself by being within a house and having to kind of film throughout the night kind of thing. But the actor was... uh... Oh, it says brilliant. in Mark Duplass and is it Mark Duplass? Or, yeah, it's one of the Duplass brothers, I think that's in Creep End. But he's such a mesmerizing, oh, he gives yeah. a mesmerizing performance in that. Whereas and these actually, guys, yeah, that makes yeah. me think if Katie c- could have been that sort of character, a mesmerizing character who maybe slips more into being possessed her- throughout and we're actually creeped out by her. Yes. Because that doesn't happen either. You know, you get to the end and then suddenly she's the bad one, but she hadn't been the whole way through. So, no, 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 no. no. And then it was done. And it was like, if they built that up slowly, slowly, and then, oh, this would be such a good idea. <laughs> I'm just on, on a roll. Mika, kind of the reason their relationship breaks down is because she's slowly changing over time and she's doing things that are out of character, but they're really subtle. So, you, uh, But it's only until the end that you realise, ah, oh, all those things were that yeah. she was slowly being... You know, yeah, that would have yeah. been cool because that would have pulled in the relationship thing. That would have pulled in the paranormal thing. And it would have made it more real because she could have maybe said, oh, um, I don't mind you filming, actually. I think we should film. But it could have been coming from the other side of like, I want to show you these things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. If there was some kind of sudden switcheroo kind of going mm. on between the two characters. There's only one bit where it suddenly happens, though. It suddenly sinks in that something's changed with her when she's like, I think Mika's trying to say, okay, it's time we get out of this house. And then she's like, no, we should stay. We should stay mm. in the house. I'm, you know, and uh, that's when it's when I think for the audience it starts sinking in. Yeah. Like something. And that she smiles. But I think also because I didn't really like the acting style, it wasn't that scary. I think it could have been really creepy and we could have had that kind of feeling in our chest of, oh no, this Mm. is, you know, this is about to get bad. But you just don't really, I don't know if you did, but I just didn't really get that. I I think it has to, you have to care about characters in a movie. You have to latch onto them somehow where you want them to succeed or want them to be happy, want them to win. But with this movie, it's... They, I didn't find anything like that. Like even as a couple, like they didn't have their house in order. So there was no mm. clear person you were rooting for. I mean, to a degree, I suppose I was rooting for Katie to kind of. I don't know. They just. I, th- I think it's just a lot of the decisions just didn't make sense in the movie. They didn't seem to really care about themselves. So it makes it difficult for us to care mm. about them. Like yeah, you're right. You know, so. And there was no end goal of like we need to get the you know like a lot of the Conjuring or Insidious. There's always a goal. We need to get this spirit out of here or we need to do these things, exercise this person or whatever. They didn't really have that in this. They just kind of spoke about it a lot and then didn't do much, like called in an investigator or paranormal person who decided not to do anything. Which again, I do not understand why they brought him in the second time. We already, we don't need somebody to tell us that the atmosphere is bad and that there's a demon there. We kind of have already guessed that. We didn't need him to come back in and be like, I'm not doing anything in this house. And then leave. It's like, yeah. oh, all right, we already knew that it was bad. Like, if he'd come in and actually pushed the story along and maybe done something or annoyed the demon even more to bring him out by refusing to leave or something like that. There's, if, there's two kind of conflicting approaches this film takes where either you go 
full realism and Mm. the characters behave how any rational human would behave and i think that's how that investigator kind of did he he kind of behaved how someone probably would in real life he'd be like yeah okay nope i'm getting out of here sorry guys you're on your own Mm. you know and that is like the the ultra realistic approach where it's like okay guys we've got to get out of here and then there's that the approach where you do silly things to push the story along Mm. you know you'll make the wrong characters will make the opposite decision to what the audience is saying Mm. and that's what like 90 percent of the movie was mm. like so it's kind of then to suddenly have that bit where the investigator comes and he's like nope see you later it just mm. felt like two movies kind of yeah yeah you're right and unless it was because you know we were running on to an hour where there wasn't really anything happening you know everything that does happen needs to push the story along in some way I think I just think overall this the movie fails to be fun or exciting to watch because it's trying to be too real. And, you know, when you're watching a scary film and especially a film that you've built up in your head to be one of the scariest films, that's when it doesn't marketing done. Yeah, exactly. And when that doesn't live up to expectations, it's always going to disappoint. And then you're always going to be able to find plot holes and acting issues and all of this stuff that just makes this film a bit of a disappointment. 